Here's the rear bumper. I think I'll just keep it as these three pieces. These are just for positioning to hold it in place while I was welding it together. Uh, it's removable. And I cut this, notched it, and I left a big gap. It's really tricky to position it and then cut it in the right spot. So I thought the second one, oh, I'll do the second one correctly. Nope, made an even bigger gap. So I'll cut some, some tube, a little sliver, and then weld that in. I'll just have to make do. Uh, the main chassis is two inches, and then this is one and three quarter inch. That's still pretty hot. And then there's this plate with bolts to remove it. And then that'll, this will come off and then the back bay will be open for the engine with the engine hoist to just lift it up and then straight back. This obviously will have to come out, which bolt unbolts and it holds the, uh, the frame out on the suspension. So I was originally gonna run these straight down but I like the symmetry of this curving in and then this is more um, uh, 90 perpendicular, so it looks a little better. So in a rear impact, what I didn't want was straight tube, because then the, uh, the forces are gonna just go straight into part of the chassis. I'd rather have this bend, although this probably won't, because it's, it's very, it's 095, but it's still very short. Even though it's bent, it probably won't bend this much. This on the end will bend very easily. Um, it's only lightly tacked in. So the, the rear bumper section will, there's about two inches of gap. So when I frame everything, I left a little bit of space so that I can make sure that everything fits in. Um, but with this, this is, I was originally going to put rubber bumpers in and then have a pivot and have a lower section here, but I'm, I think this will probably just be fine. We'll see what the inspector says. So I still have to finish the cage and I've got one door in without the handle or any of the fixtures for, for all of the windows and panels and everything, but it opens. I don't remember if I showed this. The... The issue I got these two clasp um, latch, which I don't like because you can you can close it and it will click one once for the one tab, but not the other. And it's more expensive than a single tab, so I think I'll I'll switch it out for just a single a single clasp. So I have to fix the mounts for the fuel tank, and I have to put in the parking brake, which is probably gonna be right there. And then the shifter cable, um, I have two different sets for, because this is a Porsche transaxle. So I got the right shifter cables that match, that actually fit the transaxle. The issue is it's from a Cayman or a Boxster S, and the length, is much farther. The Boxster has a four flat opposed four, which is probably at least six inches narrower. And the cables don't the cables don't fit from where I want the shifter cable. So I'm gonna have to either splice them or somehow lengthen them. So the I still have to finish the right hand door, mount a bunch of this. I'm probably gonna get some help figuring out where the brake lines should run, so I'll run tabs. And then it's kind of getting close. There's still a ton of work, but this is roughly the shape of what the, the chassis will be. So I'll just show uh, an update on the body. So I think this is three or four coats. I'm just waiting for this one more day to cure, and then I will sand it down. And each time I sand it and then re coat it, it gets up smoother. So uh, the surface is more uniform. So it's filling in the, the divots with each coat and then sanding it down the, uh, the outer section. And I'm gonna fill in some of the rough edges with drywall fill, just so that I get a nice crisp edge. And um, this part's coming on nicely. The roof is ready from the mold. And then I'm 
I think the quarter panels are, except for some divots there, I'm figuring out how I'm going to split the molds into pieces. So I have to do the same, but both left and right. The rear bumper, I have to figure out if I'm going to split the mold into separate sections. I'm waiting for this to finish curing for one more day before I sand it. And then, other than that, just touch-ups to the rear bumper. And then I'm happy with this. And the doors had a, um, a nasty separation in the material. So I sanded it down and put another coat on. The right hand side was far worse. So I sanded it down through the foam. And the, um, the curvature is, is better now. So I'll sand this down. And, and then these. I don't think I have to, I can make just single pieces molds out of these, so these would be pretty easy to, to make a test mold and part. The side sills are really, these are not really very good. Uh, I haven't put a lot of attention in these yet. It's also very hard to sand on the, on the inside surfaces. So I have to fill in some of these sections, and then that wasn't very solid. So these are gonna take a bit of time. The front hood came out pretty well. The foam was machined out of uh, multiple layers of the foam, and you can see where the, the seams it matched, and it made this kind of warped curvature so I took a ruler and I ran it across the surface and I measured areas that were below. So I painted on another layer of epoxy in all of these sections and sanded it down. All right, I'm out of battery in the GoPro. So the hood came out pretty well. I just need to sand the edge with uh, some kind of sanding tool to make sure that the, the crease here is pretty crisp. Other than that, then the, um, oops, don't want to break it. Pretty good. Oh yeah, I like how the, the rear chassis curves into one piece. That looks pretty good. All right, I gotta pack up. That's it for today.